everyone and welcome to another episode of the Stephen King podcast. This is number 67 so we're closing in on big 17, 70 and with me as usual I have my co-host Lou. Hello everyone. Hello. Is everything okay with you? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Lots of snow. Uh, cold very weather. cold. Minus 20s for the last week. This is Canada. So yeah. <laughs> I always was under the impression that where you live was always much colder than we where we lived. But I guess not. No, it seems you have more cold weather than we do. Huh. And I'm happy for it. <laughs> <laughs> if I was in your shoes, I'm sad I would for you, be though. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the last episode we're going to do this year and because of that we are going to summarize what happened in 2016 we're going to go through the month and recap what happened and it all with some favorites of our own of what happened this year but before we do that we are as usual going to give you the latest news Welcome, welcome. Do not fear the door that lies before you. We will protect you. We are your guides, Hans and Lou, and we will give you the latest in Stephen King news. But before we do so, you must prove yourself worthy. You must open the door and join us in the death room. That's right. And our first item up is a post was put up in, where was that? Movie Screenings for Fans. It's a, a website, I guess, in the U.S. And in Hollywood, Burbank, California, I believe was the actual location of the screening. This Thursday, well, by the time you hear this, it might be past Thursday, but Thursday, December 15th at 3 p.m. in Burbank, California, they were putting out tickets for, I guess, on a first come, first serve basis for anyone who wanted to see a early screening of the It movie, which, as we all know, is not actually going wide release until next September. So this is really, really early in the process. And this is not an unusual process. And I'm wondering just how much leeway they're going to give the filmmakers here, depending if, I mean, if the film's well received, they'll probably not make any changes. But if there's issues pointed out, I wonder if they have any money in the budget to allow them to do reshoots, which are not an unusual occurrence if you follow any movies at all. But I guess the big thing here is the confirmation. And I think we knew this already is that you have to be 17 years of age or over to see the screening. So that would seem to be pretty definite that this movie is going to get an R rating. And it's interesting also, you can't be over 49 if you want to see this test. Yeah, that leaves me out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How about you, Hans? Are you still well, in there? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm still 46, oh, so okay. I have a chance. Uh, and actually, I was in contact with them trying to make it work in some mysterious way so that I could join them online or something like that for, for this screening. But right. no luck there. You had to be there in person. So. Right. And I think it's safe to say that what, what the person's going to this screening we'll see is definitely not a finished version of the film it's an, a, a year a year until it's being out, released almost and can't imagine that the movie is done already i think you what they will see is a a very rough cut of it and imagine a lot of the special effects will be uh, missing and so i don't, i don't know how how enjoyable it will be to see i mean of course it will be interesting to see a, a movie in the making but as it being a a movie, I think it will will be missing a lot of what we will see when it's finished. Yeah. And I think I think they're doing this because they want to. I I think they want to have a more general feeling about what people think about it more than details. Yes. Actually, yeah. because I don't I think all the details are there yet. So, but it it would definitely be interesting to see this cut of the of the movie and then then compare it to the finished one once it's released. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. 
And the sad thing for us that can't go is that we will probably not hear a lot about it because the people going there will ha will have to sign uh, contracts, yeah. not revealing too much. I would suspect. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty normal. Yeah, non-disclosure. But you never, yep. you, yeah. But you never know. Some someone might leak anyway, so we'll know something. But yeah. Well, I guess we just have to wait and see. Hopefully, we can get at least get the word out if 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 it was good or if it was bad. Yeah. I mean, I guess they can say that without revealing anything about it. So maybe that's something they can, can read. Hope so. And if you are one of those local people in California that are going to the screening or are traveling, just especially to see this, we would love it if you would uh, let us know. Yeah. And like priests, we have... Uh, <laughs> what's, it called? <laughs> what's it called in English? <laughs> uh, we, can't, we, we can't reveal our source. That's right, yeah. Yeah, you know what yep. I mean. Okay, next up, Gerald's game is finished, at least uh, with the shooting. I guess they are editing it now, and it looks like it will be out early next year on Netflix. This this has to be the one of the fastest filming uh, Stephen King movies I've ever seen. Yep, yeah, for sure. Uh, it says in the spring, so we're probably looking like April, May time period, maybe. Probably yeah. May. I don't know. For some reason, it just feels like May would be the right time to release this, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if how it's working with Netflix. If they have certain months that they release their own stuff and and things like that, based on something that will make them more viewable, or if they just release stuff when it's finished. I don't know how that works for Netflix. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know either. No. no. All right, continuing on the movie TV news front, Mr. Mercedes is going to film in Charleston. And I'm not sure, is this the same studios that they use for Under the Dome? I thought that was, or is that a, it's one of those southern states, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the same. It might right. Be. So in any event, it's going to be a uh, based on the first book only, and it will be a 10-part episode TV series. And it was adapted by showrunner David E. Kelly. And if you've watched any TV shows, he's been associated with quite a few TV projects. It's going to star Brenda Gleeson. And it's also going to star the actor that replaced uh, Anton Yalshin, and his name's escaping me. <laughs> but we we did mention it in er, an yeah. earlier story, and he, he is a great pick for this. So also, we're going to get Jack Bender, who was associated with Lost, which was awesome, and Under the Dome, which was not so awesome. So <laughs> it'll be yeah. interesting to see what the outcome of the series is going to be. And at this point, I don't think that we have any definitive word on who's playing Holly Gibney yet. So that, that will be interesting. No. And they are also looking for extras, I think, for for this as well. Background, background extras and stand-ins. So they have a there's a link on Han's site if you go to the December 7th article. If you're in the that area or plan to be in that area during that time period, give it a whirl and you might just end up in being part of a Stephen King film a TV adaptation. Yep. Harry Treadaway was his name oh, who replaced thank you. Anthony Elton. Thank you. Yeah. And to think about also when you're applying for the parts in this, it said that you had to be living around the parts where it's filmed because they won't pay for hotels and stuff like that. So don't expect to, to be treated like a royal star. <laughs> <laughs> they never are. If they want locals. Yep. No, I think they want locals. But I must say I have high hopes for this one. And I know I had that for Under the Dome as well until we saw the first episodes, but I really want this one to be good. I, I think it could, and I really, really hope it will. Yeah, this because this is much more a straight-ahead thriller or mystery, it, it, sh it shouldn't run into any... I think what the issues with Under the Dome was trying to keep this mythology going over the course of a series yeah. when it was really just really set up to be for like one book or one movie. Yeah, I guess we'll see you soon. Yep. Next up, as many of you might know, here in Sweden we have something called the Nobel Prize. And Bob Dylan was awarded it for, or in uh, literature. And King wrote an essay on why he thought Dylan was a, a really great winner. And I don't know how it's been in, in the US, but here in Sweden it's been a, li a little bit annoying to people that he, he isn't showing up to accept the prize himself. Yeah. I don't know if that's been an issue in the U.S. or something like that. If, if a lot of people are saying that that's kind of man Bob Dylan is, he is he is not the polite artist I read somewhere and stuff like that. <laughs> he doesn't so. care. He doesn't care what other people thinks about him. So no, uh, no. Yeah, the the Nobel Prize is obviously is 
a big thing. It's more for, I think it's more recognized for the, the science uh, awards and whatnot yeah. that it gives out. But in literature, I mean, Bob Dylan was part of an era that was very tumultuous and quite a bit, quite a bit of social change. And while I've never been a big fan of his singing voice, I do agree with King that his lyrics are are pretty darn amazing. So yeah, and he bridged a lot of gaps for people back, or built a lot of bridges for people back in those time periods. So I, I I'm surprised that he's getting it so late. I would have thought he would have got it when he was much more popular. But I I'm not going to quibble about it. I mean. That's sub such a subjective uh, evaluation to give, and you just kind of have. A, yeah. I guess they're looking at his body of influence over a, a time period. As to him not showing up, this is the first I've heard of it. If that's the only thing people are annoyed about, then Dylan has always been Dylan. He's always walked to march to his own drum. So whether you agree with him or not, uh, you have to admire his conviction and his beliefs. Yeah, I was a bit surprised because earlier uh, literature prizes has gone to authors. And at least to me, Dylan is more known as a as music artist, so I was a bit surprised that he was actually getting this prize. But I don't have any problem with that. I, I think he, he could have shown up to get it. Big honor to get it, and it's quite a lot of money. So, And I think if he wanted to, he could have easily have made it work to get here. So I think that's a, a little bit snobby of him or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, who knows? He might be busy with us. Well, yes, you know, us old people, we don't like to leave our homes when we get older. <laughs> yeah. You got a chance to go to Sweden, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that doesn't interest him. <laughs> no. I'll go for him. I'll accept on his behalf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That would be fun. Why don't you take the next group of stories, Hans? Because I know they're much more near and dear to your heart than they are to mine. Yes. Charlie the Choo Choo, the book that was released, uh, and this is a lot of happening with, with this book. It was released first at Comic-Con as a very limited edition signed by the actress, an actress posing as Beryl Evans, who has been the, the author of the book. Since then, it's been released in the US, and now it's also going to be released in the UK. And early on, there was an, a copy of it that you could order from Amazon that was actually released by... Simon & Schuster children's books in the UK. But that one disappeared and uh, instead Hodder & Stoughton's children's division will release it. And that's of course is Stephen King's normal publisher in the UK. So I guess they decided they wanted to release the book and I would guess that they have first dips on doing that in the, in the UK. But they won't release the book until the summer. So they are releasing it in, in time for the movie. So, and I think that's quite good strategy, I think, actually, because I think those who really, really wanted the book now have already bought bought the U.S. copy because it's it's a fairly cheap book and it's not that big, so it won't cost that much to send, even though it always costs to send books. <laughs> so I think this is a, a rather smart idea to to release it in the same time as the as the movie is released. But what they are releasing now is a limited version of their own. This is a little mi mix between the, the other releases because there's going to be the book and it's going to be signed and it's going to have something called a scripted signature. And my I'm myself, I didn't really know what that was until I got it explained. But basically what they have done is they have taken the signature that the uh, actress in the US did and copied it in on these books and then a third person has actually held the pen that has done the signature in I don't know if it's in the book or if it's in a special like a special plate or something like that so it's not Stephen King signing it's actually the actress playing Beryl Evans whose signature a third person is inscribing in the book <laughs> was it uh, complicated yep <laughs> <laughs> So that's the signature, and this one will be released in a slipcase that we don't really know how it will look yet because we haven't seen any photos of it. And it will be, will be released in 1,000 copies on December 15. So that's uh, almost being released now. So then there will actually be four versions of Charlie the Choo Choo once everyone is out for the English-speaking audience. So that's where you can put your money if you want to have uh, every one of them. Very cool. How many are you? How many are you buying? Uh, <laughs> none. <laughs> none. None. 
like I said in our previous podcast, this just doesn't really excite me. I, I don't know. I maybe I'm just too old for it. But like I've read the story in the book. I've seen some. I've seen pictures in in the book. To buy it as a separate collectible item, I don't know. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, what can I say? It's just it just doesn't hit me in any. It doesn't tickle my collecting bone in any shape or form. So I, I much would rather get the next item that we're going to be talking about. So I mean, if somebody gave it to me, sure. If it was signed by Stephen King, absolutely. But for me to yeah. actively go out and buy one of these things that I'm going to look at for five minutes and then put it on the shelf, no, it. It has to have. It has to give me more, much more hours of enjoyment for me to be interested in doing it. I, I definitely see what you're meaning. And while I will get a copy of it, and I, I really like the book. I've read it, and I think the the illustrations are are really really nice. But if if you don't want to spend too much money on it, there is there is also a ebook version of it that you can get for I think it's like seven dollars or something like that if you just want to check it out and and uh, read it with the illustrations so that's available as well for you if you want to do that okay good to know okay. <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> Still not making me excited about it, but uh, no, no, yeah. I tried my best. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but, uh... All right, so uh, you got that out of your system. You all happy now? Yes, I'm all happy now. <laughs> all right. So the next book that we're talking about is the making of the Dark Tower, the art of the film, and this is something that I am much more interested in seeing. Depending, I mean, obviously the qualities on these can vary quite a bit too, these making of books. But I've seen them done for other movies, for, you know, obviously Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. So if it's got any extra material, like some sketches, artwork, stuff like that. Like I have one from Lord of the Rings that's just fantastic. But of course, those were two, they had two dedicated Tolkien artists working in that book. And I doubt if this book is going to be as detailed as that but i'm very curious to see what this book is going to be all about and uh hopefully this one will get a, a fairly wide distribution and won't be that expensive to to ship or buy or anything of that nature but it's got it's it's broken down into five parts it's got the path to the tower part two is about the profiles for the gunslinger and the man in black part three is the mid-world journey which will be very interesting because i don't know what their budget how much of that they're going to actually be able to show so I imagine some of the concept art, if they include any, would be quite a bit more grand than what they might have actually been able to portray on the screen to this point. Then there's discussion about the Keystone world. And then part five is a collection of insights from the film's major players, including their favorite memories and looking back on the journey that led them to this point. So again, it's not it's not a slam dunk that this is going to be a really good book because some of these media tie-in books can be pretty lame. But this one definitely has my interest. That This is something that I can see putting down 30 or 40 bucks and getting some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, I agree. And, and about the shipping and stuff, these books kind of tend to be quite big, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're coffee table, oh, but, yeah. coffee table size, yeah. Yeah, so that might uh, add extra to the shipping cost. But I, I, I agree. I think it will be worth it. And I think, I think what this book depends on, if it's going to be good or bad, I think is how much access the author has gotten to the filmmakers and the cast and crew. Yeah. Because if if he has been right there when it, when everything happened, I think this has a potential to be a very good book. Yeah. But if he's just been communicating communicating with them by mail or, or phone maybe and stuff like that I think there's always a reason that it might be a little bit flat hopefully it's been right there in the in the mix of it right okay and the next thing is also a dark tower thing connected thing there's been a app for the Sombra Corporation out for quite some time you might remember that as the one where you could actually scanned the cover of Entertainment Weekly mm -hmm. and you, you got this beautiful rose coming out of it and you could you could move it around and you can zoom in on it and everything like that. And this app has now gotten an update. And after you update it, if you go in the employee, employee sections and you log in, and of course you're going to wonder what the login is, and that one you, you will find on my site because... If there's one thing they are good at, I think they, that's the promotion stuff. They they are sneaking it out a little bit at a time. And, and what they did with this app was that they sent out 
to some of the people that hadn't got the Charlie the Choo Choo book. They sent that one out. You see, it's everywhere. The Charlie the Choo Choo book. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> yep. And on the receipt of it, they actually wrote by hand a little bit about this and included the password and username. So this looks like a receipt from the Manhattan, Manhattan Restaurant of Mines bookstore that is featured in the Dog Tower books, where someone has bought the Charlie the Choo Choo book, and on it they got the login information for this app. So you can check that out, and you can try and log in there. And when you do, you get this shine test which is, well, I guess everything compared to what they did with the Entertainment Weekly cover with the rose is going to look pretty flat and, and boring. But this is something where you, you get, uh, it's like a guessing game, and you get three cards with different symbols on it. I think it's like a square and a circle and a triangle, and then there's a card where you can only see the back of it, and you are going to select which, which card that one is. So you're going to guess on one of them, and uh, then they flip it around and... and you do that ten times, and they, uh, based on that, they judge how much shine you have. If 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 your if your shine is good, and you can guess what's what's on the card in in advance. So I don't know. It, uh, I didn't think it was that much fun for an update. <laughs> um, I tried it once. I think I got three or four out of ten. So I guess I'm not that much of a shine. Yeah, it was the same. Yeah. I guess they won't be coming for me anytime yep. soon. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. I exactly. think this is a game where a low but, score is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think that even though the the app and and the new feature isn't that very exciting, I think I I still like the idea that they are doing this and that they are sending out these fake receipts and and stuff like that. I like the when they have when they have a plan on how to promote it and they do it good. Yep. So I think I appreciate that a lot more than than the fact that that uh, I got a, a little game in the app. So mm -hmm. I think we will see more of this in the future, and hopefully good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I tried it too. I didn't buy Charlie the Choo Choo, but I happen to know somebody who did and posted his receipt online for everybody. So that was kind of nice of him. <laughs> and I tried it, and I got like three out of ten or something like that. But the interesting thing, there's uh, five other folders still locked. So I'm yeah. assuming that maybe one every month thing is going to be unlocked for us. So that's, uh, you know, that might have something a little more exciting than just flipping some cards, but we shall see. And I hope this all becomes part of a promotional push that because the movie's been rescheduled to July, there's some opportunity with some of the upcoming blockbusters. Like, I don't know if they're going to be able to or have anything ready because the last time we heard from the Sony president, he was saying that they were looking at a December trailer. Now, that was before it got pushed back. So I don't know if that's going to happen still, but it would be awesome if they could get one before the Rogue One Star Wars movie. But of course, every movie wants to get their trailer in front of that movie. So I don't know if that's going to be possible. But definitely they will have one in front of the, a movie that they do own, uh, which is the Spider-Man movie that opens in the beginning of July. And that will be fantastic and and, and really well-timed because that'll be like two weeks before the Dark Tower movie opens. So, And a lot of people are obviously going to go see Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, that that will be the big the big moment of awareness for the general moviegoer about this Dark Tower movie. So uh, hoping, hoping that this app and... All the other promotional material that they're tying into it will help make the average mover go aware of this upcoming movie. Yeah, they will. They will re reveal one new feature for you every time you buy a copy of Charlie the Choo. -Choo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of garbage. Uh Well, hopefully that uh, nice person will keep posting his receipts and. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we got one last news item and. This is very interesting to me because of all the complaints that we've heard from people who are against the movie, this is the one thing that the movie is going to give them that the book never did. Is a Apparently, unless it's, this is just a publicity photo, but it, to me it looks like a, a still from a scene, is a confrontation between the man in black and Roland. Though I guess I sh could say... I should reword that slightly because he did have a confrontation with him in the in the gunslinger. So this might be their version of that, though it looks like they're in a warehouse or something like that with there's because there's frames for a frames behind them with crates and whatnot. So I mean there's not there's not a lot to read into this because it's it's just a picture. So <laughs> but they're standing toe to toe. <laughs> McConaughey looks pretty menacing. Uh, Elba looks a little angry or confused. I'm not quite sure what kind of expression he's got on his face, but Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So, but that that's the that's the kind of thing you're going to get in the movie that you don't get as much of in the book. I don't think so. Whether this kind of mixed about this because this is telling me that we're not going to get like the the mystical campfire scene at the end of the book in the mountains that in this movie. So, uh, what did you think of on Hans? Yeah, I was I was toying with the imagination of what they were saying to each other in this <laughs> picture, and <laughs> I was uh, Makanyu is like, "Who the fuck are you?" And Elba is like, "What? Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> <laughs> with more surprise, and and <laughs> Makanyu is more ice cold and angry. But I don't know. I I can't decide if if Elba is looking surprised, scared, or or both. He doesn't look very frightening. I think. No, he looks confused. <laughs> yeah, he looks confused and more, more. What? How did I end up here? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I love Kanyu. He looks really cool and really, really, yeah, really uh, bad. Yeah, his hair looks like raven feathers or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way it's windswept. He's about. Driving his car with the window open and a head. Yeah, out. something like that. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's a nice little tweak just to kind of remind people that hey we've got this movie coming out but there's not really much that you can intuit from this except that don't think we're going to get that mountain campfire scene at the end of the movie where Roland wakes up and time has passed and whatnot so we'll have to see yeah but it's cool it's 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 really cool to see them both in the same picture anyway because we haven't done that except these montage that people have been doing of them so i think it's pretty cool that they are in the same picture yeah i just wish it wasn't so tight i wish it was a bit more further back so you could see more of their surroundings and whatnot and we see if there's other people yeah. are they by themselves are there other people in the room things like that yeah so yeah it's something to tickle our imagination yes and yes. our last dark tower tease probably of the year unless we get a trailer <laughs> yeah yeah or a new book, or an extra copy of Charlie Choo Choo. Or yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can see now that I'm not going to lay off. Yes, yeah, so I can see that. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hook your uh, hook your wagon up to that train, are you? Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, that's it for the news. This is great. What's our job? We'd like to drive around, pick up stiffs, or what? It's time for reviews from the night shift. Hans is going to set up of what we're doing for the rest of our podcast. <laughs> yes. Since this is the last podcast we're doing this year, we thought it would be a good idea to summarize what's happening, what's what has happened this year. And we started to put together by month what happened and how stuff progressed. And it's surprisingly how much you forget. I mean, there's been tons of stuff happening during this year. It's easy to just remember the books and maybe the movies and stuff like that. But stuff has happened this year and it's 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 been a really good king year i think this year a lot of ha things have happening and uh, happened and so it's uh, it's interesting but let's kick it off with the month of january where we started to hear real rumors about the dark tower and that idris elba was playing roland and of course people was quite divided by that i would say some thought it was good and some thought it was bad but i don't think anybody thought that it was us. nobody just uh, what do you call it when you just uh, raise your shoulders and doesn't think anything about it mm -hmm. shrug uh, everybody had yeah exactly shrug yeah everybody had an opinion on it of it and as january uh, progressed we were actually told that idris elba was going to play role and it. It, it was a fact mm -hmm. and i mean during this january almost everything that you heard on online was was connected to this and that elba was playing roland and as i said a lot of people liked it and a lot of people didn't like it and some of it some of the people could have a interesting and productive discussion and some couldn't and, uh, <laughs> they were <laughs> they were uh, attacking each other uh, quite a lot and this gives you an idea that this is serious business this Dark Tower books has been a, a, such a big part of every Stephen King fan's life Absolutely. for so very long. So everybody has an opinion about this and everybody wants wants it to be as they want it to be. Yep. And there were lots of crazy stuff going around, around, around people accusing each other for being racist because they didn't like Idris Elba and others stating other facts. And even King himself 
got involved with this and said he was totally fine with with Elba as as Roland and a lot of people took that as it, the fact that it was a good casting because uh, King thought it was. Others were concerned about how they were going to solve the the storyline where Detta and Roland meet and she thinks he's a, a, a white hunky mafia, I think she called him, right? Yep. So there's a lot of questions and I guess we won't know if Idris Elba was a good cast uh, until we see him in the movie or at least until we see some longer trailer or clip for it but probably not until we see the movie yeah this it it's amazing like this is a this is almost a year ago now i'm I'm curious hans are you has your mind changed at all from the initial announcement to now that we're almost like a year later are you sort of just accepted it or you still have the same opinion that you had a year ago well i i still don't think that elba is the best choice for roland Mm -hmm. but i have kind of accepted it that it it's happening and I'm now in a place where I just hope it will be super good because the main thing I want is, is for this movie to be a success and be as good as it possibly can be so I think that while I have have accepted it I I still don't think he is best one to play role of. okay yeah we, we've talked about this a lot uh, so I, I don't want to add a lot to it yeah i just want to note that it's it's kind of i always it strikes me as uh really funny when people who are very passionate about stephen king works and that but then they say oh he's just selling out or he's just speaking the company line because he makes a want to makes a lot of money like if you really believe that that's the kind of person Stephen King is, why would you still be interested in what he writes or what he's written? Because if you think he's that, that kind of a hypocrite, then I don't think that's a person that you could respect anything that they've done. So that's just uh, one of the things that strikes me when I hear these kind of comments. And yeah. the other one was the whole thing about some people were starting up petitions to get uh, Elba taken out of the film, which is almost as silly as the ones that were started when they – cast daniel craig to play james bond like you just you have to see it first and before the a petition is not going to change anybody's mind it's just being well i think it's immature so if, if that offends people that are that passionate about it uh you know that's they're just uh something that you're going to have to deal with but i just want to say that i respect people's passions about these kind of things and if they want to see, they have. A, we all have our version in our head of this movie that we want to see. But under the circumstances and in a different time and place, like you know, in another reality, this movie would have been made forty years ago. Or Clint Eastwood would be playing Roland, but that's not yeah. no, that's not possible in our timeline. And you have to look at what's available for a lead actor. And I, you know, I repeat my earlier uh, declaration that we're getting a Dark Tower movie with. Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba. Easily two yeah. two of the top, if you name the top 10 male actors working today, I'm sure in a lot of people's lists, these two guys would be there. So I think this is fantastic for this project. And I'm really interested to see what they're going to bring to it. It's definitely going to be different. And I think they've covered their bases by making it more of a sequel rather than making it a straight out adaptation. But the proof will be in the pudding and uh, we'll, we're going to see you next July. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally there. And there's always two things that you have to have, or what you want to have. You have want to have someone who looks like the person in the book, and you want to have someone who can portray the person in the book. Right. And hopefully you get someone who fills both of those things. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, and you, you really don't know which one is best until you see them. Yeah. And, and I also totally agree with you that I don't think King would say that he likes anything if he doesn't. I mean, he, he doesn't have to. Yeah. What I, what gets me a little bit confused also, though, is that when people say that, oh, Stephen King says it's good, so it must be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, people have to think for themselves. I mean, look yeah. at Under the Dome. He, he was promoting that like crazy and thought that was really, really good at the beginning. Yeah. But, but he changed his mind as well at the ending and didn't like it. So... I think that even though you respect and, and admire King, which both of us do tremendously, you still have to have your own opinion. You can't just think that something is good because he do. Yes. Yep. So I think that's totally wrong to say that everything is okay because King has said it. I mean, okay, he created the character and, and if he's okay with it, that's definitely good and in the right direction. But that doesn't mean you have to like it. No, so. I mean, just look at his adaptation of The Shining for TV. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's closer <laughs> to the book, but uh, it, it's an inferior version uh, to the movie version, which I don't think is a very good adaptation of a Stephen King Shining, but it's, it is definitely a very effective and I was arguing a, a masterpiece of a movie, even though I don't think it's yeah. the Shining story that King wrote. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's move on to February. Okay. So... I had a couple of items in February. First off, we found out that the movie version of The Stand by Josh Boone has been pushed forward or back or away or gone, <laughs> and that he's going to do revival first. We also got the, the premiere of 112062 on February 15th. Uh, we learned. Yeah, that was something that, that when, when. Sorry, I interrupted you there. Yeah. But when I, when I put together the stuff on this list, I was, wow, was that so long ago? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that it wasn't long ago that we were sitting here discussing it and talking about it and stuff like that. And it's it's been almost a year since that. Right. That's unbelievable. So that, that's the, yeah, it's amazing. It's come and gone. Yeah. And we learned that it is still being planned to be two movies. We also found out that there is going to be a missed TV series in 2017. And also that uh, Talisman 3 is at least two years away. So, Hans, out of those ones, which ones grabbed your fancy the most? Well, I think the saddest news there was that the stand movies were, were being pushed back because that sounded like a dream come true, yep. uh, those four movies. I really enjoyed 11, 22, 63. It had some issues that, that could have been done differently, but I thought that was, on, on the whole, I think that was a great, great adaptation. It be I don't think that when we heard this about it, that it was go still going to be two movies, I didn't think that I reacted especially much to it by then because we didn't know what was coming by them right other than then it was still being made so that didn't didn't do much for me by the time the mist on tv i have i have mixed feelings about that hopefully it's good hopefully they don't push it too far so that it becomes something like under the dome right but i think that's 50 uh, 50 i think it could be good it will def definitely be moving away from the book because or the story because the story isn't long enough to, to build a tv show on but Hopefully it could be something like Haven that still had the feeling of, of King but divided in its own or, and become something of its own. So hopefully that could be good. Mm -hmm. That the Talisman 3 was at least two years away. Well, that wasn't really a surprise to anyone, I think. So that was more just like, okay, I'm going to wait and be patient and sooner or later it will come. <laughs> Yeah, for me, the and this this goes down as the most disappointing news of the year for me was the decision to move the stand movie version uh, to the side as well, so that Boone could work on revival first. Uh, because I'm afraid that by the time he gets to this project, you know, the players change at the studio so often that the people that come in might not be on board with this with this project anymore and Boone might not be in the in the mind frame to do it which is too bad because in November of the previous year he had given that awesome interview with Kevin Smith on Hollywood Babylon and he it just sounded like that he really got king and he had a really good vision for the for the stand and I thought four movies was just the perfect length for it bar doing it as a mini series so and revival is a good book I, but I you know, obviously it's not the stand. And I just don't think that Revival is going to have the same broad audience appeal as potential as the stand did. So, yeah. and we haven't really heard anything about Revival since this announcement either. So I, I don't even know if it started a production or anything. No, I, I think that the last thing we heard was that they were in the casting process. But yeah. we, we haven't heard anything about anybody, anybody being cast. So I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's not a good indication that we haven't. Yeah, and I think Boone's attached to some other franchise now too, some superhero thing or something else. I can't remember, Teen Titans maybe or something like that. So, oh, okay. or, so you know, I, I don't know if uh, any of these King-related projects are, are going forward anymore, which is sad because he really did seem to have a good feel for it. And he hasn't given any updates that I've been aware of as, in, in relations to King material as well. The other thing that I, it was really great to get to 1122.63 as a miniseries. And I, I agree with you, Hans, it's hard to believe that. That's, <laughs> that seems, that seems yeah. so long ago now. Uh, my feelings about the miniseries are not as, as high as yours. I thought it started out strong. I don't think James Franco ever got a proper handle on the character. 
and I think the whole way that they got rid of the the the, the Bill is it Bill whatever is yeah it, the way they got rid of his character just made Franco's character really look bad. But the standout was Sarah. Sarah Geddon, I thought she was just fantastic. I, I think she was the best part of the, the whole miniseries, as well as the actor that played Lee Harvey Oswald. I think he did a really good job as well. So it was a mixed yeah. bag for me. I'm really interested in The Mist on TV because I think it could outdo The Walking Dead, depending on what kind of budget they have, because The Walking Dead only has zombies. If The Mist could have, you know, it's got everything, monsters, yeah. whatever, depending on, on what they do. I'm just hoping that they're not going to redo the novella for the first season i I hope that they ideally they would just either make that the first episode or just <laughs> i don't know just jump right into the to the new part of the story that happens after the book but i doubt that i'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to probably recreate the, the the novella first before they move off and to do new stuff but i don't just don't spend 10 episodes remaking the movie or the or the novella let's get into some new stuff with that one so i'm i'm curious to see where they're going with that yeah i agree and, and i think I think from the photos we have seen so far, they are going to do the story, and they are going to place it in the mall. It looks like uh, at the photos, at least. Right. But I agree with you. I hope they don't drag it out for ten episodes. I mean, one or two or maybe three, and then to get to know every character and stuff like that, and then then we need to move on. I think as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And also because we don't know if there's going to be a second season, and it would be a mistake to just make the first season's ten episodes like a, a stretch-out version of the movie. So I think they definitely need to, yeah. to expand it to, to get more attention for it. Yeah. So, okay, are we ready to head into March? We got a lot of Dark Tower confirmation during that month. We know that Nicholas Arcel is shooting a movie and that they are starting in South Africa. For seven weeks. They set the premiere date for January 13, 2017. We now know that that has been moved ahead. The movie won't be based on the first book. Well, we know that there will be stuff from the book in it now. We learn that much. Idris Elba is confirmed to play Roland. Matthew McConaughey is confirmed to play the Man in Black. And Abby Lee will likely play Tirana. We don't really know who that is so far. So we had a lot of stuff about the Dark Tower being confirmed and really... The movie was it was starting to form and shape and we were giving a little feel about what to get didn't know that much about it yet and but it was it was interesting this dark tower stuff was, was always there things things were always happening and well it, it was really interesting mm -hmm. we have had confirmation uh, maybe it hasn't been reported directly but uh, my understanding is abby lee is playing one of the manny yeah and what else have we got here I think the, the main thing that I actually really enjoyed was the Idris Elba tweet once he had been announced on Twitter that he he tweeted Matthew McConaughey, you have one new follower. I just thought yeah. I just thought that was a brilliant tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, of course McConaughey yeah. responded, "Come and get me. I look forward to it." But I, I just love that you have one new follower. <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was yep. the tweet of the year for me. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah, I love that quite a bit. Do you think it was uh, Elba himself who did that? Oh yeah, do you for think sure. Yeah, for someone sure. who running this. No, thing? no, he he, yeah. he does his own tweets because he's been a, he's if you're on Twitter at all, he he tweets regularly. He's also done a lot of he does a lot of DJing. Actually, he was that was how he made a living before he was uh, or some supplemented his ah. acting career. So if you go out there and because uh, he put out one tweet that that he had put down a new track for uh, that he was going to DJ at a club, and I said I I tweeted him and I said I'd love to see Roland dance the Come 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 Ala to this. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he never responded he but this is where it all started to come real and you know king king made his proclamation as as long as he remains true to his quartet and he was fine with the casting so uh, we'll have to see how it works out but yeah it was just, uh, those were exciting times for sure yeah we also found out that king would do a tour in the u.s for promoting the upcoming end of watch book the third and last book in the bill hodges tri tri trilogy the first one being mr mercedes and the other finders keepers and it's always interesting when king announced a tour and all the places he will be staying at and people are liking them or disliking them for this or that reason and will there be a book signing or will there be a reading and will there be like in the in the case of this uh, there were I think 400 pre-signed pre books at each uh, place and people were uh, talking a lot about how those books were distributed and if 
you could watch uh, the book itself and see if it had been opened you could see that it's fine maybe and that could indicate which book had been signed and stuff like that so it's it's always interesting to see and these tours are are really great to attend if you can i've been to one in england and one in in germany the it was really interesting to to see king on stage it looks like he will he is doing less and less actual signings at these events before he did did when i was in london he did i think it was three or four signings in bookstores and he signed at the reading and then now he didn't sign anything he just pre-signed books so maybe it's it's starting to to wear it on his hands and to write and stuff like that so but i, I would definitely recommend everyone who can go go to one of these tours if you do any anything in the future to do do so because just the fact to see him on stage and to listen to him talking is is really great if you get a signed book uh, yeah that that is great but if you don't you still have a great evening and listen to him so i definitely think you should do that if you get a chance absolutely hopefully it'll come to europe and i'll, I'll definitely be there <laughs> yeah i I don't, you know, he hasn't made an official announcement about this yet, but I really wonder if this was his last year of doing any sort of major tours or signings. I mean, who knows? Maybe he enjoys doing doing it to a limited extent. But if the the last couple of years, if there's any indication of uh, how much touring he's going to do, I, I think that you're going to really find that starting next next year is going to be less and less. I imagine he will do some because of the next book is with his son, Owen, and he'll definitely want to be there to try to pump up Owen's profile as well. But I don't know. I guess he's got a couple of movie premieres to go to next year as well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Tower and yeah. It. Yeah. And they're pretty close together. I mean, there's only like three, two, three weeks of a, uh, a part between those two movies. So yeah. I think it's going to be a pretty quiet year next year for King in terms of any sort yeah. of public appearances. So if you get a chance, definitely grab it. But he does these smaller things for like universities and that as well. So he might pop up there. But yeah, those the days yeah. of blitzing TV talk shows and doing 50 city tours and stuff like that are definitely gone. Yeah. And definitely, if you live outside the U.S., you should definitely take the chance. Because I remember when he was in London... 2006 he hadn't been outside of the u.s for i think about 15 or 20 years i think for tour so that was a really big deal and every everybody thought that 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 was it he wasn't going to come back because he doesn't like to travel and fly and stuff like that so but then he was back in 2013 went to paris and germany and i think everybody thought that was going to be the last time he's coming to europe so i guess we'll have to wait and see if if he shows up again, then I, I will. I know I will definitely be there if I can. So, so I hope hope everyone else is as well. Mm -hmm. The last thing that happened in March March that we are going to talk about is quite interesting and also disturbing at the same time. <laughs> uh, and that was the news that a new Children of the Corn movie was being sh filmed, and it's interesting because we actually got photos from the set, so it was actually filming because. Often when these kind of movies, the reports are that they are filming and blah, 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 and then nothing happens. But here we actually got photos from the movie or from the set when they filmed it. But still we haven't seen the movie. So uh, you have to wonder why that is. And um, <laughs> I, for one, <laughs> I for Not one really. definitely... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, for one, will definitely see this one, actually. I see, I've see. i seen them all. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> I know they are really bad, <laughs> but I, I, I still see them. And uh, you never know. One day you might gotta, gotta get lucky and get an interesting one, but I assume this one will be as crappy as the other ones. But I, I will still see it, and you never know. If and when it's out, I will force you to see it as well, so we can review it here. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Uh, how did I miss all the? Yeah. Other, how, how did I miss having to watch all the other ones? I don't know. <laughs> well, we are. They are coming up in the future re review or something like that. So you're gonna have. To uh, okay. And there was also a remake in 2009 as well, right? So. Yeah, yep. Which. Yep. Yeah, this is just one of those things where you just go, like, "What the heck is it about this franchise that keeps making filmmakers pop out another one when they are?" 
obviously never really well received and never do that well financially. I don't know. It's strange. I don't yeah. I don't know what it is about this franchise that keeps people coming back. I guess there's just a lot of cornfields out there begging to be filmed or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think they've done seven movies uh, and one remake. So uh, According to this, I there's like, you've got pictures of eight plus the remake, so that's nine. Uh, ah, that's nine, yeah. Yeah, right. so, wow. Wow, that is unbelievable. <laughs> and I bet you most people only know only know about one of one or two of them out of the whole franchise. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. So, uh, check it out. Unbelievable. All yeah. right. So, that's now we're starting to get to our second quarter of the year. And we had three stories in April. One was about two pieces of fiction, unconfirmed news about Music Room and Hearts in Suspension, and then we had one about uh, our first announcement that King was collaborating on a book with his other son, Owen King, and the It movie got its premiere date locked down for next year, September 18th, 2017, and they've been firm on that date, so that's that's good to know. And, of course, as we reported in the news, they've, they're starting to do early screen tests, so that one seems to be had a pretty smooth production and it seems to be sailing along quite well. Now, if we look at the, the stories... It's interesting that we've already, in our last podcast, we just talked about the Music Room short story appearing in Playboy. So you can listen to that podcast and get our deeper thoughts on that. And as well, Hans gave a very in-depth review on Hearts in Suspension. Yeah, and especially the Hearts in Suspension was an interesting book because, as we talked about last episode, was that when it was released we really or announced, we really didn't know what it was because they were very vague about if if it was a Stephen King book, if it was a... At first, everyone thought it was a new fiction book, which they it it fairly fairly fast was re- announced that it wasn't a, a fiction book. But we thought that it was a collection of essays from people going to the University of Maine, and and that King actually just had one of the essays in it, and it would be like a more a book about the University of Maine than of King. But that changed, and it turned out to be a really interesting book. It, it took it a, some time before we actually know what it was, a, what it was for, for kind of book. So I guess they could have been more clearer when they announced it. But uh, I guess it's also fun to that things evolve during time. So yeah, yeah, and it also gets your vote for the worst King book cover in history. Yeah, I <laughs> think so. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I unfortunately haven't had a chance to read yet. I'd really like to get my hands on it, but the shipping costs just really make it prohibitive for me. Yeah. I tried to get our Hopefully library be... to get it, but the, yeah, no dice. I, I hope it will be released in a paperback version. Or by... even an ebook. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. I mean, Stephen King, so I mean, there's money to make, so hopefully they will see that and, and release it. Yeah. Because I think that the the hardback was only released in like thirty thousand copies or something like that. Something so like that. So it should yeah. sell out. Yeah, it should sell out pretty fast. So they, then they might do more of them. All right. And the other, well, the one there's not much to talk about because we just that's pretty well stayed status quo. But the uh, first bit of news that we had that King was working on a book with Owen was kind of surprising. And at the time, we didn't really know what the book was going to be about. But I'm very curious to see how this one's going to turn out because. Unlike Joe, Owen has a much different writing style than uh, Stephen King. So it's almost more like, I think it's going to feel more like a Straub King collaboration than a Stephen King and Owen King collaboration. But we'll have to see how this book turns out. Yeah, yeah, because I think that Joe and King has, since they have so similar, I mean, if you read a book by one of them, or a book by King first and then one by Joe, they're... They could almost be have been written by the same author because they are very similar in style and and stuff like that. So, but Owen is totally different in his style. So I think this will be more like a collaboration more than just one man show. So it, it will definitely be interesting to see how, and it will it will be interesting to see if you can see who wrote what. That will be possible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's move into May. And as usual, the Dark Tower is dominating the scene. They were shooting some stuff in New York, and we got a lot of photos from it. I mean, the internet almost drowned in photos of of uh, the gunslinger and Jake and and the man in black, and uh, they were standing and walking and talking and doing almost anything <laughs> in New York. Yeah. 
So, and, and it was interesting. I don't know how about you, how you felt about it, but I both didn't want to know about it and on the other hand, couldn't, couldn't look away. I had to look at the photos and I had to read everything about it. And if, if I had to, to make it all over and if I could, I might have skipped some of the things to be more surprised in the movie. But here it was like, it was almost like people had been standing there taking photos as the shooting went on. And if you put those photos after, after each other, you could almost see the, the scene being sh played out. So I guess that's the, that's the good and the bad thing about internet and everything being uh, available for you. That you know about stuff that maybe would have been good to not know about when you see the movie. But I guess, I guess that's, that's life for us now in, in these days. Yeah, I I really like this news, and I for the main reason that even though they are you know it's a sixty million dollar budget movie and they're obviously trying to spend their dollars wisely, which is why they filmed in South Africa. There's some things that, for ambiance reasons, you just need to be in the actual physical location. There's just a reality about certain places, and cities definitely are one of those. And New York City has such a distinctive character that you need to film those scenes that take place in New York in in the actual physical location of the city instead of on a set. So I was very happy to see that they're making that they're kind of they're you know they're they're being economical but they they're making decisions and spending their money money wisely and spending it in the right places. So to be filming on location in New York City is probably the most expensive part of the shoot that they did and I'm glad that they were able to have the budget to do that and it also just confirms some things that we were wanting to see about the story as well and i think this this these photos more than anything helped people get used to the idea of seeing idris elba as roland so and i think i think it's on a, another level it works for me because i made the conscious decision not to reread the books before the movie comes out because i knew that these movies based on the next article are not going to be strict adaptations of the of the movie of the books so i i wanted to see what they were what direction they were taking it and this really helped solidify a lot of things for me yeah and i did the other part uh, other went the other direction and decided to listen to all the audio versions of the book again all right and i just today finished the fifth book mm. which by the way was extremely much better than i remember it <laughs> uh, I didn't remember it as bad, no, but yeah. it was it had so much more of Salem slot than I remembered yep. it had. Yep. And it it's almost like a follow up as Anu King usually uh, uh, several times has mentioned that he won't be writing a follow up to Salem slot because he he did that when he did the Dark Tower 5. And it really is you get a lot of story about what happened to Father Callahan and the others uh, in this one and it it I really really enjoyed this book. I don't know. I haven't read the the fifth and sixth and seventh book more than once, and that was when they were released. And I think that when I did read them, then I I was starving so much for Dark Towers. So I think that I might have <laughs> have read them too fast. You know, you know how it is when you're you're really really hungry and you sit down to eat. You almost throw your the food in your mouth, and you you don't really have the time to taste it. And I, I think I think I I might have done a similar thing here now with, when I read the books the first time because now I I I think I I find more stuff in them now that I I actually missed when I read them the first time. So right. I am really enjoying reading them again, and and um, tomorrow I'm going to start uh, listening to the book six. So I I really enjoy them, and as you mentioned also that there was a photo posted on uh, Twitter of the horn of Eld. Which, and here is a spoiler for those of you who haven't read the book, so you're going to have to cover your ears for a little while. We know that Roland loses this one, and as the seven book ends, he, everything starts over for him, and he has the horn. And in this movie, he has the horn. So, this confirmed that the movie is a continuation to the books, and not an adaptation of the books. All right. And as you said, that, that gives them a lot of leverage because they can change basically anything they want because this is the second time or that, that we know of. It might have been going around a lot of more times, but this is the second time that we know of. So things doesn't have to happen as they happened in the books. So I think that's good choice for the filmmakers because they can, they can do it as they want to do it. 
but I still think they need to keep the characters the same, and I hope they can do that. But once again, we have to wait and see. But mm -hmm. I think the base of making it a continuation is a good good move for them. Yeah, I, I I really like this idea, and like you, I do. Even though this is a continuation, uh, there's obviously signature moments in the series that we want to see repeated and yeah. with the characters that we knew from the previous cycle as well. So hopefully they're just doing this to allow them to make economical changes because they just can't film everything that's in those books. And I'm worried that the things that you just talked about in book five with the Salem's Lot backstory and all that, I don't know if that can be included in the movies. Unfortunately, I think a lot of that's going to get dropped because while it is great for King fans to find out that what happened to Father Callahan, it's not really essential to the Dark Tower story itself. So who knows? This might become one of those sections of the books that might be a potential TV series. But I'm just really hoping that the core of Father Callahan's story still remains true in, in the movie version as well. I hope they don't drop that character altogether. That would be very, very disappointing. Yeah, and I think I think that would be a good idea, actually, to keep the the movies focusing on how they advance on the Dark Tower yep. and then have those, like, actually, book five could be isolated to a, a season of a TV series yep. with any, without any problems because that's what's happening in... in Kala Bernsturgis is fairly separated from from the other stuff that happens, so it it wouldn't have to be told in in the right order. So that could be saved for a TV TV show to keep the flow up with the movies and not drag it out to be too many movies, maybe. Yeah. The other thing that, and it kind of ties back into the previous article, but I forgot to mention it. What I, what I also find exciting that we're finding out about the New York location shooting is that they're including elements from later books and I'm um, such as the Dixie Pig and the the Dutch Hill Mansion that I hope they're just going to be like placeholders so that when they show up again audiences are going to say oh I remember that place from the first movie and that's a bad place so that they're already going to be really super psyched when they see it the second time and know that something major is going to happen there whereas opposed to if it just showed up the time that it did in the book they're just going to go oh what's that place is uh, what's so special about that place but the, they're going to know when they see it in, in the in the sequels that these are places that have important context and meaning yeah yeah and and they are probably going to skip back and forth in the storytelling because when they are at the mansion in the books both eddie and susanna are or in, in the story, but we know for a fact that they won't be in this first movie, so that will be interesting to see how they juggle that mm -hmm. aspect of it. And if I was a Sony executive, I'd be chomping at the bit to get to those sequels, because just like Groot from Guardian of the Galaxies, you know, once Oi comes on the screen, yeah. a whole new wave of interest in the, in the, in the Dark Tower series is going to be generated just by Oi's appearance uh, and his ability his abilities to sort of talk and things like that yeah that would be very interesting to see how they solve that and i hope they solve it in a good way yeah and not too childish ache ache <laughs> yeah <laughs> you imagine the, how everybody's gonna go oh <laughs> yeah, yeah and then later on they're gonna cry when they hear that yeah yeah, and the last thing that happened in May is that we also get confirmation that Mr. Mercedes will be turned into a 10-episode miniseries, mm -hmm. and it looks like it will be just those 10 episodes. We don't know. It could be that Find His Keepers would be another season, or and End of Watch will be a third, but it, it looks like this Mr. Mercedes will be a 10-episode thing. And that is good because we know what happens when they drag things out too long mm -hmm. to get another under the dome. So, sounds good. And as we mentioned earlier, they start filming it now. And it, I don't know if it's, it seems to be set for 2018. So they are probably going to be filming a lot of stuff during 2017 and, and edit it and stuff like that. And Brendan Gleeson and by this time Anton Yelch was uh, set to play Brady Hell. Ha Brady Hartsfield, he passed away and was replaced. But Brandon Gleason seems to be still on board playing Bill Hodges. And I think, if I remember correctly, that we were pretty happy with this casting. Yes, he's a great alternate choice under tragic circumstances because he did a fantastic job in the Penny Dreadful series as uh, Victor Von Frankenstein. So I'm really looking forward to his interpretation of this evil character. 
Okay, that's it for May. And in June, it just had an explosion of big news items. I don't think we're going to cover them all, so I'm just going to list them all, and then we'll pick the ones that we find the most interesting. Yeah. First, we found out who was cast as Pennywise. End of Watch was released. The End of Watch tour started. Cell premieres on iTunes. I don't think that either me or Hans are going to pick that one. <laughs> we got the title for the King and Owen King book. A new sh short story. Surprise. Not that we were aware of that this was coming out. Cookie Jar was available. And we got our first pictures of the Losers Club. So, Hans, what grabs your fancy out of those? Well, the fact that Pennywise will be, will be played by Bill Skarsgård, who's a Swedish actor, That's right. was, of course, very exciting, I think. By then, we didn't know anything about how he would look. And he looks pretty different from, um, uh, what's his name, who played Pennywise? Tim Curry. Yeah, thank you. From Tim Curry. And a lot of people were complaining about him as well. But I I, I thought it would, he would be good because I think that you need to have something different if you do a remake. And I think I think he will pull it off. Now By now we have seen the photos of him and stuff like that. But it's always fun to have Swedish actors being involved. Yep. He is a good actor as well, so I, I would prefer a non-Swedish good actor to a Swedish bad actor. Like <laughs> if, you could get a, if you could get a Swede that's also good, I mean, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and the watch was released, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. And King King went on tour for it. And for us who can't go on, on the tours, it's always interesting to follow them anyway, because King usually ends up giving some clues to what's coming and what's not coming, and that's what he did with ro book he's ri wrote and written with uh, Owen, and he revealed that it would be called Sleeping Beauties, which is a quite unexpected title, I must say. But a pretty cool one. Yeah, exactly. I think it's great. Doesn't really sound like a Stephen King book, but mm -hmm. I mean, well, that that could be so a, a old fairy tale. Yeah. The the most surprising thing I think was actually the this new story, Cookie Jar, because this one has had been online for, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I think about three weeks, and no one had caught it. It 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 just lay there. <laughs> no, no one had had found it. Like a cookie uh, jar. At least no one who. Yeah, yeah, at least no one who in the King community, and I mean, between you and me, we know a lot of people, and it seems to have been gone past by everybody. And one day I got a, I got an email from, from someone saying, oh, I found this one, is this a new story? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hot damn. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, yeah, how long yeah, has that was pretty cool. the Stephen King story, yeah, since the Stephen King story has been released and no one know about it, no one found out about it, and so that was definitely the... The surprise of the year, I think. And it's also interesting that we got to see a photo of the Losers Club. It doesn't say much because it depends a lot about how good they can act. But it was interesting to see. We got a tease that they would move it up when it happened. It was more modern version because they had more modern clothes and stuff like that. So we now know that the the children part is playing at in the 80s, I think. Yep. Instead of the 50s, so they moved this, moved it up like 30 years. Yep. So that was interesting, and it's always exciting to see how the characters you read and, and come to love from the books will look in the movies. So that was definitely also very interesting, I think. Yeah, especially since uh, I think around this time is when Stranger Things started to make its appearance or, or public awareness uh, over on Netflix. And we yeah. had the crossover with what the, the Finn Wolfhard, who's playing the, the lead character for, of each club in both franchises. So it's it's that was definitely very interesting. And uh, I think in a way that generated a lot of that series generated a lot of Stephen King awareness as well, because so many articles were quoting him as, you know, being an inspiration for that series. So and so you had all of this going on as well as the It movie being filmed at the same time. So it was a very busy King summer. And I think the Sleeping Beauties thing was the one that caught my eye, as well as the cookie jar to, to find a new story that uh, nobody had been told about. And it was actually a, a really decent story as well. So I liked it quite a bit. June was a busy month, and it was a good Stephen King month. Yeah, and I think that Stranger Things, while it was, I think it was good, but I think it was a little bit overrated. I don't know if it was because I heard so much good thing about it, things about it before I saw it that I thought it would be better than it was. But it, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was fun, though, to see how how very much they wanted it to be influenced by Stephen King. I, I remember seeing some 
clip that someone had done showing all the references that this was based on Stephen King stuff. Right. And I mean, they they took as an example that when the Venona Ryder character is chopping a, a hole in the wall with an axe, <laughs> that they <laughs> gave credit to to The Shining because Jack Jack Nicholson is chopping a, a away at the door. <laughs> and I mean, I have to stay grounded somewhat at least. I yeah, think, yeah. When you do these things, yeah. Or they they just become too much. And I think also that in June we had disappointment of the year or the. The second disappointment of the year, the stand being the first, that was Cell, of course. Oh. <laughs> I yeah. had really high hopes for this one, and the uh, casting was good, and the story is good, and we know that it, it probably wouldn't be good since it had been sitting on a shelf for, I, I don't know, two years, long, I think. Two years or something. Yeah. So I think deep, uh, deep inside we know that this is going to be crap, but please, please let it be good. And it was crap. So <laughs> it, 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 I think that, that in retrospective, I would be more excited about the upcoming Shield and the Corn movie now. <laughs> Cell again, actually. So, yeah, poor Cell. You is. didn't need The Shining to know that that was not going to be a good movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, too bad. Yeah. Okay, Hans, you got the next one, and it was equally as busy. Yeah, July, uh, summer month was very busy, and this time we got more photos from the man in black in New York. We got the gunslinger in New York, we got Roland and Jake in New York. We got a lot of photos, uh, and that was really a continuation of what happened in June, because they were filming this month as well, and we got, it, it was interesting, because I haven't been this, I, I would like to say this close to a shooting, but I was on the other side of the earth, so I, I don't know if that's the right word. But it was interesting to follow on Twitter, but because people were running around New York and finding uh, notes on, on lampposts saying, you can't park here tomorrow at noon because they're going to film the Dark Tower. And everybody ran there and, and they took photos. And so, I, I mean, even though physically I was very far away from the action, Thanks to the internet, you you almost felt that you were all you were close. You you could follow. Okay, they're going to be here that date, and and they're going to be here that date, and and stuff like that. So I, I I found it very interesting, and and once it was over, I I it, it I felt an em- felt an emptiness because there wasn't a report about it anymore. So uh, it, it was interesting, and I re- I really liked it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we also got a, a book called Six Scary Stories with intros by Stephen King that was stories that had been selected from a contest that were, were run. And King had supposedly picked these stories and written a short introduction to it. I had hoped for more introduction by King, so I don't think... I think King's name on this is a little bit far-fetched. It really doesn't have much to do with Stephen King. Not to say that I wouldn't love to have my story in it if I write it. <laughs> yep. But um, it really doesn't have much to do with Stephen King, but it's out there. It starts filming, and as with The Dark Tower, the internet was flooded with photos of every character, every scene, every house, every board that was placed on that house, <laughs> except the uh, picture of Pennywise. We got everything else but picture of Pennywise. Until later, when we actually, the same month, got professional photos of Bill Skarsgård in makeup and Pennywise clothes. And I think he looked great in them. Of course, it's very hard to determine anything by a photo where he's just standing. You you really have to see him act in them, perform in them, to see if, if, if the clothes and the look and everything and his voice and everything fits before you can say too much. But it, it was exciting. It was almost as exciting to see the first photos from the Dark Tower to see Pennywise, I think. So that was exciting. And, of course, Charlie the Choo Choo was given out at <laughs> Comic-Con. <laughs> Yippee! So, um, do you have any favorites besides the Charlie the Choo Choo book? Yeah, we'll, we'll put that one off to the side. It's got a special place of honor. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. the all the, the the photos that we were getting from the filmings for the Dark Tower and it just fantastic. I think I mentioned on one of those podcasts during that time period, and it would be an awesome Easter egg if if these two shoots had somehow worked together to sort of have like one maybe 
scene crossover between the two of them. The doubt that it will happen, but it was just like an Easter egg to see like Roland walking in the background or something like that or yeah, <laughs> something like yeah. that or, or the kid, the Losers Club riding behind them or him and Jake or something like that. That would have just been fantastic. But yeah. And that's one of the things that we're going to have to keep an eye on for The Dark Tower because it crosses over so many other King works. But in the film world, all those King's works or rights are owned by other movie studio companies. So how generous are they going to be with each other and allowing uh, uh, things to show up from cross works is uh, something that we'll have to see. I'm guessing probably not very much. But I thought and it was a bit frustrating for me because I used to live in the area really close to where they were filming it. Like I grew up in Oshawa for, uh, when I was younger. To know that they were shooting the film in that in that area was both quite a buzz and quite frustrating because now I, I live out on Alberta, so I couldn't. I had no way of getting out there. But if I had been there and still in Ontario, I definitely would have tried to get to the, a, a couple of days shooting. Yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, so it was like they were almost uh, competing, the Dark Tower and it does, to get the most coverage that month. So it, it was really yeah, heady times yeah. to be a King fan, for sure. Yes, and, and it's interesting because how this has really exploded with the photos because I remember seeing when one of the what's it called uh, Star Wars movies were filmed. Someone had sneaked up on that. I'm taking a photo from far away where you can see like a blurry person, probably standing. Didn't know if it was a he or a she, beside something that you couldn't really see what it was, <laughs> and posted it online. And and he was almost sued if he wouldn't remove the photo. So and and today we have these excellent photos where you can see almost every detail of the characters and it's okay to post them and, and so things have, have changed really yeah in that perspective yeah and the other bonus from all the it coverage was that from what we're seeing from the set shots is that that looks like the movie is going to be covering a lot more of the material uh, from the book that the miniseries wasn't able to do. So that's also good to see. Yeah. And of course, it ended the month with a bang as we got our first look at Pennywise. And I thought he looked fantastic. And it was funny. I think the reaction of people who were really into horror was they were kind of like underwhelmed. But I think people who were more casual saw that picture and go, ooh, that looks scary. So yeah, I think uh, on that count, the movie makers have hit the right balance. So we'll have to see. Yep. Yeah, it will definitely be interesting to see him acting in the costume and makeup and everything for sure yeah. all right uh august was kind of a quiet month i guess everybody was either on vacation or tired out from taking all those pictures but yep. we had one photo <laughs> of from it that was newsworthy and that was a a photo of the leper which again yep. is one of those elements that was not covered in the miniseries so that was exciting and we as a podcast hit a milestone of sorts we got broke a hundred thousand downloads which was pretty pretty cool for us considering yeah. that we didn't think we were probably going to get it past maybe 10 or 12 episodes, and here we are recording our 67th. So that's been pretty awesome. Yeah, that's very exciting. And hopefully that means that people like what we are doing and that we can keep doing it for a long, long time. Amen. Yeah. Okay, moving into September, people are back from vacation, and things are starting <laughs> to happen again. <laughs> yeah. We actually get our first photo from the set of The Mist, and that that one hasn't given, given us as much photos as the It movie and the Dark Tower movie has. But we have some photos of the cast and the, the crew and some of the scenes we get and some behind the scenes and stuff like that. So it's it's always interesting to see. I think it's it's fun to see those photos. And then when, once the movie is out, go back and see if you can, can place them where they were. Yeah. We also got a release date for Hearts in Suspension, which, which turned out to be November 7th. We got word that the story Hearts in Atlantis is going to be turned into a movie. And because there already is a movie called Hearts in Atlantis, this one will only be called Hearts. So that's a very strange thing. The story is not called Hearts in Atlantis. It's filmed and called Hearts in Atlantis. So when Hearts in Atlantis is filmed, it cannot be called Hearts in Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. interesting. But uh, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. We also got news that the Dark Tower is now heading for TV as well, and this has been discussed a lot in in the past as well, that they were planning on doing movies and TV shows, TV series for the Dark Tower, where, as we also talked about, that the, the main story would be in the movies, and some side stories would be in the TV show, like probably the bo fourth book, when Roland is, is younger, and maybe other stuff as well. So that seems to be happening, and 
What surprised me a little bit about this was that they actually announced it so early. They don't, don't they don't really know how the movie is going to be accepted yet. So on the other hand, it's good that they've started working with it and they get it out as as fast as possible if it's a hit and I guess if it's uh, not a hit they will just stop what they've been doing and do something else yep. Elba has signed on to appear in the TV show probably well it depends on if, if there's going to be like the book fifth book then he can probably play uh, Roland and if they're going to do the fourth book they will have someone else playing Roland because he, he'll be younger then Mm-hmm. Tom Taylor, who plays Jake, has also signed on, with, which also might indicate that there will be parts that happen in the reality that the book is in, and maybe something in the past as well. McConaughey, he's he's uh, he's not signed on for the TV show as as it looks, but I guess he could pull off being playing both present and the past version of of the Man in Black, because obviously he's not human, so he could look the same both now and then. So. Yep. That that really isn't the problem. We also find out that there will be one more Mr. Mercedes book. We don't really know if it will be like book four or if it will be just about character. It was later really revealed that Holly Gibney will be back. But we don't know really if it will be a total Mr. Mercedes book or if that will be placed in some other book or, or exactly how. But we will see more about Holly at least. I think that's kind of logical because... Mm-hmm. I think she has a lot more to tell us. Yep. We also find out that Sleeping Beauty will uh, be released in 2017, and it will be very long. Yeah. Uh, and by King standard, that means probably around 1,000 pages, I would guess. We can only hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we also get that King and Straub may start writing the Talisman 3 next year. May. Yeah, May. We, heard, we have heard that said <laughs> a lot of times before. So yeah, I don't, I don't dare believe that they will start writing the book until they say we are writing it now. <laughs> but we can only hope. Yep. So, is there anything here that uh, strikes you as extra interesting? Uh, I think I went on a bit of length on this already, but the announcement by the king that he was going to be doing a Holly Gibney standalone book, I thought was surprising. Yet. When you thought about it, totally logical, as that character had been set up, you know, very fragile in terms of her mental psyche. So with the loss, spoiler, of her crutch in the Mr. Mercedes trilogy, it makes sense that she's going to be uh, in a very vulnerable position. And what and I, I believe he said this book would be supernatural as well. And maybe I'm just yeah. hoping that it will be. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she seems like the perfect person to be subjected to interior and external mental stress and could make for a very scary book. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. So that that's – even though I think a lot of people want him to return to a more traditional horror-type story – I think this just because she has a connection to the Mr. Mercedes trilogy doesn't rule out the fact that this could be a more traditional Stephen King book. So I think it's going to cover two two birds with one stone, which is cool. So that was the first one. And then the King and Straub news that they would start Talisman 3 next year, we'll have to see. I mean, if he's working on the Holly Gibney book, I don't know which one's going to take precedence. I would think the Holly Gibney book would. Maybe he's going to do that one or maybe he's already almost got Holly Gibney he's going to be done this year, so that leaves him clear to jump onto the talisman next year. We'll have to see. So I, th- I think those two announcements were probably the biggest two things that interest me. The other slight surprise was this Hearts in Atlantis movie. I just, I don't know, I just don't see the market for that movie. A lot of people said that he's been writing too much about Mr. Mercedes. Do you think he should shelve this books, book for maybe a year and... and publish something else in between or do you, do you think there's a risk that people think that he he's written too much about the these characters and and uh, maybe maybe even they might even think that that it's a book they want to read but it's too much at the present that they should hold off on it how, how do you think about that i i can understand that sentiment and also, if you combine this this one announcement with the straub thing maybe he's going to because he'll strike when the iron's hot. If he wants to talk, write about Holly Gibney, he's going to do it. But he might write it, yeah. and they might just hold on to it and have him do the talis- work on the talisman and release that next, and then 
re released the Gimney book after that. So, but again, as I just said earlier, I think that this the Holly Gibney character is in a good position where she can be in a standalone book that doesn't really have that many ties to the Mercedes trilogy anyhow. So I think it's a win-win for both him and the readers. Yeah, and and I can I can agree. If you don't like the Mr. Mercedes books, then this news isn't particularly good for you probably, because even though, it, it, as you say, it could be a totally different book, if you don't like the character, you are probably a, a bit reluctant to read this book as well. And I think maybe if they have another King book for next year, they might want to hold on with this, because even though he writ he's written it, they don't have to publish it right away and maybe give some some room for something ex something besides that in between and then go back to this one. I don't know. Maybe as a marketing strategy it would be better if they hold off a little bit on it to get every everyone in. Because if, if you like this book there's no problem. But if you don't like it you will probably enjoy another book more and the other book will be enjoyed by the people who like the Mercedes books as well. So that might be a a thing to think about if you're a publisher, but hey, I'm I'm happy to get a new book. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, it's not it's a non-issue for me, but hopefully for the people that it is, the Stephen King and Owen King book will give them enough of a, a gap between this Polly Gibney book that it won't be an issue anymore as well. Yeah. All right, so we're getting into our last quarter and uh, October. Yes. We had a leak. And no, it wasn't a wiki leak, and it wasn't anything to do with the Trump uh, or Hillary Clinton election. It was a Dark Tower trailer leak, yeah. uh, which was quite interesting. And then we had the Harry Treadaway replacement casting for Anton Yelchin and Mr. Mercedes. We also found out who the cast would be for Gerald's game. And Hans ha was able to make a big announcement about 20 years of Lilia's library. So, Hans, yep. out of those stories, which ones do you like to talk about? Well, my own book, of course. I've been working on it for way over a year, so it was really great to finally be able to speak to people about it and, and tell them what I, I was going to do. So that was very exciting for me personally. The other thing was the, the leaked trailer, of course. I mean, that, that was the first time we could see Roland and the others move and see them moving around, even though some of the special effects were gone or wasn't done, things like that. And it would be interesting to see how, to hear how this trailer leaked. And I guess it wasn't the way they wanted us to see Roland the first time. But as a fan, I, I can only say that I was excited to see him move, uh, <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving pictures of him. So uh, I actually watched the trailer several times the same day it was released. I was a bit a bit nervous to post anything about it on on my site because I know that stuff like this usually get pulled down and and in a very harsh manner as well. So I think I ended up just putting a link to someone else's page who posted it, so I, I wouldn't have to <laughs> deal with Sony's lawyers. Right. But I think that was very exciting for that month. Uh, Jarrah's game was interesting to see that it was as everything with this movie it happened very fast that. It's been mentioned for quite some years that it was going to be made, but once it was set in motion, it seemed to happen so fast and, and everything was just happening after each other. So that's that's fun, I think. The replace, replacement of Yelchin was, of course, the reason was sad, but I, I think that Harry will do a, a good job replacing him, and I think it was good news that the series is still being done. It could could have easily been dropped because of what happened. So I think it was good news that it, it, it's still happening, uh, and I think we got a good replacement. It's sad it, that it had to be, but I, under the circumstances, uh, it, it, I think it will work out good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, first of all, first off, you know, obviously the 20-year celebration that you're doing for your site is, is uh, you know, it's a real tip of the hat to you to, to be able to keep your site going for that long, and it just shows not only your dedication, but King's perseverance and <laughs> his <laughs> his productivity to be able to generate enough material for sites like yours to keep going for 20 years that's pretty unusual yeah. uh, and it's been a big service for a lot of fans so uh, and I've been very 
grateful to be a small part of it uh, with the podcast and sort of helping to spread the word about the site as well. So it's it's been a, a really awesome journey for your site and for me personally as well. So I, I thank you for everything that you've done. The Dark Trailer trailer, again, you just, uh, you know, that's... <laughs> That shows a, when you're a fan is when you start looking at less than pristine material, just yeah. trying to sift out details and whatnot. Overall, I really liked the trailer quite a bit. The more I, I rewatched it, the more I liked it. It's still gonna, it's still a, an adjustment for book readers to, to see the material presented in this way. You get, you might be getting false impressions from the trailer, but it really seems like a lot of the success of this movie is going to be riding on Tom Taylor's shoulder and his portrayal of Jake as he was very present in the trailer and he is being used as a vehicle to set up the un the dark tower universe for the average moviegoer so he was heavily featured in the trailer the few scenes that we saw of uh, matthew mcconaughey he looked awesome as flag and uh, oddly enough i think roland probably got the least amount of coverage in the trailer and his scenes were the hardest to make out because most of his took place uh were in dark dark scenes as well so uh, yeah. it's hard to say but he had the he did get the quote the gunslinger's motto. I like that quite a bit. So yeah, it's uh, not long now until we get a really polished trailer. It'll be interesting to compare the finished one that they released to the one that we got in this working copy. Yeah, and one thing just hit me now that we talked about this trailer. I think that one of the problems with the movie movie once it's out is that I think this is one that you want to see several times uh, because the first time you're just going to sit there oh it's rolling it's on the big screen wow <laughs> oh, you're going to sure. miss a lot of you're going to miss a lot of things and maybe the second or third time you watch the movie you're going to be able to focus more on the details yeah so i think that this might actually be the first time i go to the same movie more than once at the cinema Absolutely, for sure. I mean, I, I I had the same thing with Lord of the Rings because I knew the book so well. Yeah. The first time you're just okay. This is this is not the same. This is different. Uh, I'm too emotionally in a in a flutter right now to properly process it. And you're gonna come out of it going well. You will probably feel a little. You'll feel mixed, no doubt. You'll probably feel some things are really cool. And other things are like totally. You had totally different expectations. So seeing the first time helps you say, okay, these were my expectations. This is the movie that they delivered. Now I have to actually put my expectations aside and go watch the movie again and just see how well did they do what they delivered. So I don't think that we'll be able to properly process this movie until you see it the second time, for sure. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. a, that's an excellent point. Yeah, so that will be interesting. Yes, for sure. Anything else about October that you want to talk about? or? No, I think we covered that pretty much. All right. November. Go ahead. Big yes. month. <laughs> Moving into November. Here we got something interesting. Out of nowhere, we get word that 1922, the story, is filming for Netflix. It, it seems like Netflix will be King's home for a while now. With, uh, <laughs> both Gerald's Game and 1922. And we, we didn't know about this being filmed. And we didn't know anything until it just popped out that it was filming right now. So, um, and and... That is quite unusual that they keep something like that from from the fans for for so long. It, usually, when casting is going on and and stuff like that, it's it's usually just found out. Yeah. So that was that was quite kind of interesting. Yes, for sure. Yeah, and we also got the news that the Dark Tower film were postponed, and I think that we weren't that surprised about this happening, right? No, no. Because they they would have to work in an unhumanly way to get it done in time. And I think most of us actually thought that when we got the first date for it. So it wasn't a surprise. It was still a kind of disappointment, I think, because we were looking forward to it. But hey, it's better that they take a little bit more time and do it as they, as they want to do it and make it right. So the new release date is July 28th. So we're going to have to wait until the summer. Mm -hmm. See it. So it it was a couple of months delayed, but I think we can live with that. Hearts in, Sus Hearts in suspension is out, and as you mentioned, it it will have to be ordered from the University of Maine. I heard it, heard that it was going to be sold by Amazon, but that doesn't seem to happen yet. So I don't know if if Amazon will sell copies from it, or if you have to buy it there from. And if you're not living in the U.S., the postage postage is going to be more expensive than the book itself. 
So it's it, it'll be an expensive book, so you're going to have to decide if you want to buy it or not. Charlotte Choo Choo is out in the regular copy. And King reads two excerpts from Sleeping Beauty at an event. And this is also very interesting because this was an event for mainly for, for students who had the chance to buy tickets first. And this was at Princeton. And I think that a lot of the people going to this event was maybe not their first because they are King fans. I think that they were student there and they got a chance to see Stephen King and they took it, not being, still not being the fans that we are maybe. Because nothing, absolutely nothing about the plot has been released based on the two excerpts. The only thing that's been revealed is that one of the excerpts was from a woman's point of view and the other was from a man's point of view. But we haven't heard anything more about it. We haven't heard any recording. We haven't seen any video clips from it. We haven't seen anything. And, and this is very unusual because usually when, when King reads from something, it ends up on YouTube or something like that. And we can can take part of it. But not this time. So the mystery of Sleeping Beauty is still there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, in this day and age, this is... This is quite unbelievable that we still haven't yeah. gotten any reports on this public appearance that where King read these two excerpts from. Blows my mind. I think it's probably the most surprising thing uh, out of anything that we've reported on year, on all year that nobody's recorded or talked about this. I wonder if they confiscated the phones and cameras at the door yeah. for this or something because uh, it's it's very unusual that this has not been captured in some way digital and released digitally yet so so that's that's probably the the biggest thing that the 1922 you know that's i gotta be honest that story hasn't stuck with me too much so um i don't really remember it, it that do you remember that story clearly yeah i think it's uh, about a farmer who, who remembers when when he was young and and someone was killed in a well or something like that it hasn't stuck with me in detail as well yeah so so that was interesting that they, that they were good. But it's got a good cast. Thomas Jane, I've always liked. He just yeah. it, has an appearance on uh, The Expanse TV science fiction series. So, and, of course, he did The Mist. So he's always been one of those actors that just never seemed to get the big break to, to make him like an A-lister. But he always does uh, solid work. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see him in that. The Dark Tower post-moment news was not unexpected. Disappointing because I still think February would be a good month to claim. Uh, it's a quiet month. But... The bonus here is that Sony has wisely positioned us after Spider-Man in July, so it's definitely going to get a, a visibility bump there. And there's not a lot against it at that in that time period as well, so it's 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 still a good time period for it to shine. I just hope that it uh, it pays off for them. All right, so that brings us into December, and we've reported in the news about these stories, but we'll just recap them, and it'll give Hans yeah. a chance to talk about his choo-choo train set a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, Charlie the Choo Choo <laughs> arrives in the UK in 2017. There's a limited signed version of Charlie the Choo Choo. There's an advanced screening of it on December 15th in Burbank, California. And Mr. Mercedes is going to film in Charleston. So, Hans, do you have any steam left for Charlie? No, I'll, I'll let him rest now. <laughs> um, the most exciting thing about this, like, actually, I think, is the it screening. And it's also the most frustrating thing because I can't be there and watch it because I, I would really, really like to see this one next week. But. What are you going to do? I can't very well fly to the U.S. and see the movie and fly back. <laughs> That's uh, right. It would, be, it would be too expensive, but it's interesting. And, and I would love to get in behind the scenes on this and, and hear what... It would be interesting to hear what they are thinking and what they are looking for and, and what they yeah. are... I mean, there must be some uncertainty in uh, or about this movie for them to screen it this early. I mean, I can't imagine that it's being done yet. So this is a, a very early screening, and I imagine that they have some concerns about it. So it depends. Sometimes it, it's a natural part of the screening process. They just want to see what the tweaks they can make to maximize the viewer's reaction to it, right? Like some viewers, they might... Because with a story like this, they could really lay it on heavy and dark at the ending or they can sort of leave like a, a bit of hope or it'd be interesting if I, and i doubt that they did did they film the the scene the scene that everybody gets up seems to get the most uh, upset about with the boys and the girl i doubt yeah. it but <laughs> they might Probably want enough. to they might have set it up so that it's you can infer it 
and they don't show it on screen and they might see if that still plays okay or if, or if that even is too upsetting to people and they prefer that that not be shown so it's stuff like that just to get it's like a first draft uh, reaction to a story and you just get a chance to tune it and just tighten it up a little bit and make it all that more powerful because of it so that i'm not really concerned about that that's a that's a pretty normal reaction i i, I am surprised that Warner Brothers hasn't announced solidly yet if the sequel is is going to be done yet though. So maybe they're waiting to they're going to wait till box office returns because a lot of times with these things the studio pretty well announces very early if they're going to make the sequel or not even before the first movies come out in the theaters and this hasn't happened yet in this case. So it it could be they have they've always said that it was going to be two movies so maybe that's they see that as the announcement that there will be two movies well they th what they say and what they do are two different things yeah <laughs> right <laughs> so i i would like to hear some solid casting news because if they're going to start yeah. filming this next year i would assume yeah. and the i think both movies like the the budget for the both movies was 40 million and i think 20 million went to the first movie and 20 million is going to the second movie. So you're not going to get big name stars here, but thus hopefully they can get some solid actors to play the adult counterparts of the children actors. So uh, yeah. yeah, and I I actually think that this one has bigger chance of being a success than the Dark Tower. Actually, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, a 20 million dollar budget doesn't have to make a lot back, right? No. Anything if they if this move first movie makes. 60 to 80 million. I think 80 million. I think that studio would be overjoyed, especially for an R-rated horror movie. But anything beyond that, that will be gravy. So yeah, uh, we'll have to yeah. see how that plays out. So it was a busy 2016. Yes, definitely. Especially for Stephen King, and I think for people in general, I think 2016 is not going to go down as one of our most happiest years. Not just in terms of what happened on a worldwide stage, but I know for myself, Hans, I don't know how it's been for you, but I've had a lot of family and friends who's had to deal with either economic or family hardships due to economic climates and family members passing away. So it, it's been a tough year, I think, in general. for And a lot of famous people have died this year as well that we grew up with as kids. So it's it's yeah. it was a pretty dark year, and I think it's... Interesting that in these darker times, Stephen King always seems to be a little more popular. Yeah, yeah. And we, we actually got our two books this year as well. We, we didn't think we were going to get two books, but we did. Both End of Watch and Hearts in Suspension. And Charlie the Choo Choo. So only <laughs> well, yeah, but only one of them is fiction, right? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. So what, what was your favorite thing during the year? What what is the thing you will remember if you look back in yeah, 2016? I, I think it's probably seeing the Dark Tower movie finally turn from a hope into reality. Yeah, I agree. It's the same for me too. It's it's been with us so long, and there's yeah. been so much talk about being turned into a movie, and now it's finally happening. And even though I don't agree with all the decisions they seems to have been making. It's so interesting and fun that it's actually happening. So yep. I think that even even if the movie isn't as good as I hope it will be, I will still be excited about it being done. And I know I will be there at the premiere night here in Sweden, which probably will be about half a year after you see it. <laughs> <laughs> With my cowboy hat on and my gunslinger belt on. Oh, <laughs> cool. Now. Yeah. I won't I won't do that. But I will be seeing it and I think that's very exciting. And also I think it's very exciting that King is still very productive. We get two books this year. We know about a couple of books. We know about the Holy Gibney book, we know about Sleeping Beauty, we know that the plan still is to do Talisman three. I mean we're we're kind of spoiled with getting so much after so many years, so Yeah. It it, it looks it looks like I, I'm going to be able to run the site for another 20 years. But, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's, well, uh, they could always start talking about Joe Hill as well, right? So. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. I just uh, I just put a J-R after Stephen King. Yeah, <laughs> something <laughs> like that, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I hope to all our listeners out there, our constant listeners, you've enjoyed this year of podcasting. We've tried to yes. keep, keep a... A regular schedule as possible. Try to get to at least one podcast a month, sometimes two if we can. I think that's that's a pretty good pace. Yeah. Anything more than that would be just not possible for either of us. And I, I think 
I think the listeners would get bored if we had a podcast every week anyhow, so... Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think we, we're doing pretty long podcasts as well, so I think that yeah. it's better to do them uh, with a bit more time in between and, and do them longer and, and better. So I think a couple each month will be a good pace. Yes, and I, I just want to give a shout out to all the uh, other Stephen King related podcasters out there. The guys over that did the eleven twenty two sixty three podcast, we had a blast with them on. We had a blast with Cooper O'Connor from Stephen King Cast. I was over at the Dark Tower Palaver with those two guys. They do a, they do a fun podcast. They just had their recent roundtable up, and they just you know they just sort of shoot the breeze about what's happening with the Dark Tower movie as well. And then of course it's always a blast for me to hook up with Hans once or twice a month and just share our thoughts on Stephen King going on, be they Charlie the Choo Choo or other more important <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to be able to enjoy your day with stuff like that. And next next year we'll be going through Children of the Corn movies and Yahoo! interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah. The only thing yeah. is I hope that we can come up with a solution to involve you listeners more via through chat yeah. room or audio video type of uh, live experiences, but we're constrained by budget and time as to and technology. If anybody has a solution, an easy solution for doing real time video chat podcasts that allow for chats with users please let us know that would be a big help because i've tried several things and unfortunately some of the things that we've tried that look promising then the service provider either goes out of business or just loses interest in it and then it's gone which is too bad so yeah so but anyhow 2017 yeah. hans what yes. are your big hopes and wishes for next year well concerning the podcast i hope we will continue during the year and have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. I hope we have a lot of interesting guests. I know some that I think we will be able to have on the show that I think would be fun. I hope that our listeners will be more involved. And we have one thing that you can do already now that you're uh, when you have some time off for Christmas. I posted on Facebook that I wanted you to, to send in topics that we would then talk about. And my plan for that was to do improvised edition or episode where we would put all these topics in a hat and just pull one out and I would read it out and Lou and I would then have like maybe five minutes or three minutes. We'll have to decide how long we're going to talk about and then just say whatever comes our mind, to our mind about that topic. Oh, that, that could be dangerous. Be yeah, it could be dangerous <laughs> and it could be interesting. And I think, I think definitely it could be interesting to hear because normally we often have some plan on what we're going to talk about and we know if we want to do a review and we have some plans. We have time to think a little bit about what, what we want to say and what we want to talk about. So I think that could be an interesting way to caught us off guard a little bit and, and just speak what's on our mind. Yeah, live TV. So, yeah, exactly. So please send in those topics. And it could be anything, really, that's connected to Stephen King in some way. Anything, a book, or something that's happened, what we think about this or that, or whatever. There's no limit to, as long as it's connected to Stephen King. That's right. So next year, this, the year of the Dark Tower movie and the year of the It remake. So it's exciting times for King yes. fans, and I want to wish all of our constant listeners and you, Hans, a uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Same to you. We'll be talking to everybody next year, and we got to get it right this time, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Am I going to go first, or are you going to go first? Uh, I think you can go first. <laughs> okay. So to all our constant listeners out there, stay safe. What? Stay scared. Yay! Hey, happy <laughs> 2016. <laughs> See you next year. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>